阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀。佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for、um, joining us in our I think third session, second. Forgot、um, in our following upcoming、uh, following session for. The Tai Shang Gan Yin Pian, the Treatise on Response and Retributions. Today, uh, <clears throat> before we begin, I would like to say um, the um, a great thank you for our youth group from last week to give us a lot of discussions and a lot of enriching the contents.、Uh, as I have already said, this、um, I'm scrolling down to the phrase we're going to. All this、um, are giving you a A a rough, a guideline: what to do, what is right, what is wrong,、uh, and then it's up to us to enrich it with the story of our life, and also we have history to help us as a guideline. Always remember, these are used to、um, helping us、uh, and better our lives,、um, and it's in no way you should use this to measure other people as a ruler. You can you cannot use that and say, "Hey, man," he says,、uh, "You know, he amends merits and treats everything with gentleness and compassion." Are you gentle? No, don't do that.、Um, we should always use this on ourselves. I mean, the only time we use on others is when we trying to understand what's happening and the cause of the issues, and maybe this help us to analyze what's going wrong in the society, what's going wrong in the organization. People are no longer more、um, caring. Uh, hence, the karma won't be good, right? The effect won't be good.、Um, so, understanding this help us to understand our world better, our self and our world better. That's the ultimate goal to build a consensus.、Um, no matter how small our team is, if it's just a group of ten who can build a strong consensus on doing the right thing and you know、um, and helping people away or direct them away from the wrong path.、Um, Then I would say that it's already contributing a lot. You know, don't look down on the small amount. Even one person, he can create all this as well, like you know, all these set up,、uh, all these set ups and all that. So, don't look down on yourself.、Um, always remember, looking at this, if we have commit any trespasses, try your best to understand why is it the trespasses and how do you change it,、uh, and 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 do it in a way that you can do it every day. So that's the mindset we need to have. We learn humbly, and not just from the book, also from everyone else.、Uh, different people, different experience. So going back to our、uh, last session, we have talked about the 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 core、um, concepts of、uh, treaties on response and retributions. It's karma, basically, and how karma works.、Um, how karma works in the beginning. It's you reap what you sow. That's the core concepts, and the、um, the effect always happens exactly as how you、uh, did it before. So the cause and effect, the the condition, when condition is met, the effect、uh, will happen because you already have the cause in it. So to make it simpler, is、um, just like your shadow. Your shadow is exactly the same as your body measurements. It does not stray. It does not have plus or minus. No, no, total, no, ten percent more, ten percent less, exact. So punish, uh, you get exactly what you have, uh, what you deserve. It sounds like very like like an angry person saying you get what you deserve, but um, it's a statement, right? We 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 use a statement in this case. It's a you uh you receive exactly what you have incurred, whether in this life or in the past life, all right? Time, right? So. Uh, after knowing that, we understand there is punishments, and in 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 our in our current human society, we have life prisons, imprisonment. Same, 
you get punished by shortened the lifespan. Basically, you have less time uh, to accumulate merit in this world. If we understand Taishang is all about how do you avoid misfortune? How do you actually gain fortune? Not just what you think it is, what it, what actually, what's the practical way to gain it? And um, what kind of mindset we should have? And immediately on chapter two, after we know in that chapter two over here, we start from uh, the cultivation of virtue, virtuous individual. Basically, we set up a role model. What is virtuous, right? Um, I have studied a bit on the, not study, but uh, in my company, we have a bit of like training on ethics. And they say virtue is like a role model and it's about character, building a character, and I love it very much because essentially what we're doing now here is building ourselves a character. We're building, we are growing ourselves as a person. How do we grow as a person? What kind of character we are? Uh, who do we want to be? We may have weakness and no one's perfect, but it does not mean that no one can be better than who they were. So how do we get better, right? And we need a role model. For our case, we have Shaimani Buddha as role model. Uh, we have Venerable as role model, Master Qing Kong, Master Xue Wu, Master Wu Xing. But the point is, what you want is to learn um, the right example so that you your life is getting better and better. Your perspective is getting wider. Your um, worldview is getting more um, open and broader. And you are more, how to say, grounded in uh, true human compassions, love, um, at the same time also values other people's uh, different uh, experiences. So basically broader, wider. And that's infinite. That's how you grow your wisdom and everything. So um, importance of character, right? Um, what you act will decide who you are, in a sense. And how you act is based on what you thought, your worldview, what you, what you think is right and wrong. Otherwise, you won't act on what is what you think is wrong. So, to, and there's um, this relative, you know, difference and all that. We still need a standard that everyone can sit on together, because without consensus, what you think is right, other people don't think is right, and that's what we have right now. It's very confusing, <laughs> and um, while it's good to have a more open worldview, but it's also important to have a ruler in your heart, ruler, a compass. Without compass, you get dragged or get pulled by others. Hence, role model is important. How this role model go through, navigate his era, his time, uh, his co his, the context he was in. How did he get through that? What kind of result did he achieve? What kind of student did he have? And among all the students, uh, what's their achievements? And you can see as their students' achievements, you understand this teacher is really good. Shaimun Buddha, obviously, 10 students. And even other religion, Christian, uh, Jesus Christ, if you look purely from teacher's perspective, how he taught St. Peter, St. Paul, uh, how he changed Saul, uh, who is very, um, very, um, how to say, violent or something, into someone compassionate, uh, how he treat other people. So as a, just as a virtuous character, you can learn so much from this. And this can be applied in how we treat other people in this life. This is the whole point of learning from a role model. It's very natural. Our parents is our first role model. Doesn't matter if they are a good example or bad example, they are our role model. And and even though you have your own element when you're born in this world, you're still influenced by how they act, how you speak, even your look as well. So back to this point, this is why we're here. We're here to have a look at the role models. Through these um, teachings, we understand uh, what is right, what is wrong, and how do we do right, how do we do wrong. We can go deeper on this, how. Because this how, there's a saying, right? The devil is in the details. Ah, it's the hardest thing. It's easier for me to say all the big principles and overlying, uh, make it sound very cool and fancy. But when you talk about actual practice, actual action, and kind of like um, the pace that we go on, then we need to be very patient. We need to be very uh, realistic, understanding where we are and how, how do we get better? How do we niche ourselves out of that comfort zone? So... Back to this uh, virtuous individual, um, what does a model of a virtuous individual looks like? First thing, he always walk the path of virtue, right? Um, and avoid anything that is vice and evil. So in Chinese, it's called 
，知道者进，非道者退。啊、uh, ，So basically, this already extrapolated what Tao is, because in Chinese, Tao can means road, can means the path, the path to what, right? The path to enlightenment. For Tao, um, but this case we talk about virtuous individuals. So Tao in this case is Shan Tao. How do you become a person, a good person? How do you avoid to be、um, wicked? So first thing, first criteria, he does not stray from what is proper, and avoids committing offences in secret. So what is proper is always against committing offences in secret. So if you want to do what is proper, that means what you do in your own room, one person by yourself, is exactly the same as what you do outside. As in, your character is consistent. You are not double-faced individual. It's not to say that you should. You know, sometimes there are things that you should not bring out the conversation with your, if you're married, your wife or your own family to the outside, because it's privacy and all that. But what I'm saying is your character is as in you do not, you will not do、uh, in the in the public. There's something you will not do, and you, and you do the same kind of commitment to this, um, let's say um to these morals, to these rules in your own private. Uh, time, so that's what's proper. Because how do we know what's proper? Look at the other sentence: avoid committing offenses in secret, thinking that no one will know. So that kind of mindset is is small. I say it's my privacy. I can do what I want in my own person. Yes, but、um, they will you will become bipolar in a sense,、uh, in the in the in the smallest way, because、um, you think no one can see, hence you can do what you want. So that kind of proper is not right. It's not proper, because、um, what is proper is doesn't matter where you are, who you are,、uh, doesn't matter where you are, doesn't matter what position you are,、uh, doesn't matter who you're dealing with. You're consistent. You're like that.、Um, obviously, you can change for better if something needs improvement, but you are consistent.、Um, you're not like、um, double-faced individual. That means you're trustworthy. You're honest. Your integrity is in, in it's there. So. There are stories of、um, like many the Chinese story、um, ancient history. They have、uh, people who、uh, do not commit sexual misconduct. You know, some people appear very gentlemanly and very you know pure, but in the secret, they got into this kind of scandals and all that. So there are many histories about those people who accrue fortunes, accrued fortunes in form of、uh, better job prospects.、Um, You know, his own children get into better jobs, something like that, because he has avoided、um, the temptations in secret. That's the most obvious one. The other thing is bribery. Bribery, and、uh, as an official, like a public servant, they usually have.、Um, uh, it's common, right? That people might、um, show up as you know, all righteous and all that, and then in the in the private day. Accept some donations, some funds without enclosing it properly for the right purpose. So that's avoiding that's committing offences in secret, thinking that no one will know.、Uh, but as we, there's a saying in Chinese: the paper cannot wrap the fire. The truth of fire will always come out eventually, whether you're in your lifetime or when you die, it will still come out. Trust me, it will come out, and it come out it will hit you and your own children very hardly, very 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 heavily. If you hide it, so always have a. This is the operating principle. Do not, uh, how to say, 君呃事无不告人之言，就是说，嗯、um, ，if you want to be really good person, like the person who are how to say, without any um guilt or burden of guilt, then you must do something that you uh you must not do something that you would not publicly address to the world, something that you're ashamed of. Uh, showing to the world. If you have done that already, amend, make amend as quick as possible, as soon as possible. All right. It might look like you get disadvantage by acknowledging your faults. Trust me, this is just you just gotta pay the debt, right? Basically, and once you clear out that obstacle、uh, in your heart, then everything you do will be brighter, lighter, because you're free of debt. Uh, everything you do is zero from zero debt, compared to someone who already has one million in debt. Everything they do, they they might say, "Oh, since I already have one million, why not two million? Why not three million?" 
and their debt keeps rolling and rolling, it's easy to understand through financial perspective. And until they're leveled past their capacity to return it. So they got bankrupt, they got crushed by this weight. So everyone will get <coughs> its up com comeuppance one day. So if it's up to us to clear out this obstacle inside our heart, ASAP, right? Don't don't leave it until the end of your life and then lie on the deathbed and say, oh, I have so many regrets. Trust me, it's not a pleasant way to go. And even now you're living, every day if you allow that guilt to build up, it's painful. So anything you commit in private that you think is not right, quite right, find someone you trust, share it, and see how you can get out of it. If you have religion, then find a father or a priest or a monk or even the Dhamma brothers, sisters, or the sisters or brothers in your convention, in your church, or in your in your mosque, to to express, repent, in a sense. Repentance is about getting rid of the impurity. And repentance is not just about kneeling in front of uh, Buddha, or Christ, or in the mosque, and then just say, okay, I'm cleansed. No, you do that, that ritual is to help you to clear, uh, to, to, to direct your act, to clean it, that means in from that point onwards, you want to avoid the same mistake again. If you repeat it again, then you have already violated your own vow. That means you need to really um, enforce on yourself. No one will enforce on you, trust me. Uh, okay, the karmic will enforce on you, but don't wait until then. It's, it's terrible. You enforce on yourself that so that Eventually, when time comes, you don't have to bear that much, okay? So, how do you enforce on yourself? Your speech, your act, your action, your speech, your thoughts. Um, follow the teachings that you follow, good teachings that you follow. What is right, what is wrong is already said there in the teaching. So, there's a vantage point of religious people who um, really have that sutra to help, or their Bibles, or their Quran, or Torah, something to guide you. What is right, what is wrong? There's a reason why people cultivate it for many years, thousands of years, because even though there's a lot of um, abuse of authority, uh, of trust, but we must look at the bright side. This teaching has its own values. And this one as well, this helps you to clear out this vague uh, ambiguity, especially ambiguity is even worse in this current era because everyone has their own set of ideas and logics. How do you clear this out is to understand what is right, what is wrong here. So, repent means that you follow thoroughly the teachings. More thorough than you were before. Before, you maybe take 10% from this Taishan Kanyin or from Buddha Sutra. Now, after you repent, maybe give yourself 15%. Commit more. More commit. The more you commit, if you commit 100%, then you have completely purified your own characters. That means, um, be it good or bad, you're able to hold still to your Path, not stray from it. Uh, that mer that that is how your crew merits. So now let's go in to the path. Okay, I'm being in front of a door selling this, trying to tell you what it is, how the door looks like. Now let's walk into this door. So first ladder, first step is how to be. What is right? What is the right path? There's only one right path. There are many wrong paths. Okay, but there are many ways to get to the same destination. Remember that. And um, sometimes it takes a bit of turn. Sometimes it takes um, longer because we like to look at the site and stuff. Sometimes people just go straight to it, right? So right now we look at what is the right path. First one is he amass merits. Okay, merits. Treats everything with gentleness and compassion. So people who want to have merits, that means, you know, in form of what? You know, in form of clarity of mind, smart, or in form of wealth, or the most obvious one, and in form of um, health, health, come on, health is a merit. Um, in form of um, anything, can you you can bring up, Auntie? What what is the effect of merit? What what does merit means to you? How you look? Well, yes.
Ah, okay. That's a, that's a very good perspective. Yeah, interesting. That's right. Like how how your heart is, the state of your heart will affect your your appearance, right? Your face, more than just your face, your your expression as well, right? Your aura, right? The, the like how 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 people feel about you as well when they look at you, like this person is welcoming or this person is unapproachable, something like that. Just uh, divert a little bit. That says a lot about the beauty industry, isn't it? Trying to alter the physical appearance. But in reality, all it takes is your heart. What kind of heart creates a face that people like? A part of gentleness and compassion. First thing, they say, he amass merits. And then the first law is treats everything with gentleness and compassion. A person with really gentle, like as in really care, caring person, a caring person, gentle person, a person who will love everyone, love people, like truly love, like not really, not romance, like actual like um, universal love, you know, compassionate. That's why they use compassion instead of love. Um, has that face, has that, uh, how to say, it will collect people and material and everything around them because everyone wants to go to them uh, and everyone loves to be with them. Uh, so, uh, and we have talked about that last week, about what does gentle and compassion mean in different scenarios. Um, being right, being truthful, all right, is also a form of compassion. It is not a compassion if you sugarcoating things too much. It's another thing if they cannot accept it, but it's another thing, but it's not compassion if you, um, how to say, not helping them to grow up enough to face the reality of the world or reality of the situation they are in. True compassion, all right, builds on wisdom. Uh, that's something I it's a perspective to add into it. Because a lot of people might understand compassion. Some people might think compassion as in just being kind. That's true. Being kind. But how do you be kind? Right? What is kind means? Benefit others. Essentially it's benefiting others. How do you benefit them? Is sugarcoating something benefiting them? Say you're in a position where you need to tell them the reality of the maybe in the team there's some issues you need to bring up. Being kind means that you solve the actual problem so that they can live happily. They can actually live burden free or they have the ability to face more problems in the future without getting crushed by it. They have two kids to do it. That's compassion. And that compassion requires you to have the wisdom to understand what is wrong, what is right, and what kind of perspective can we look into this problem and what can we do to, how do you say, at least face it, if not solve it. Everyone has, there's, there's a reason, like in, in, in the modern society, we have higher rate of depression or higher rate of this pain emotionally, right? Uh, set aside the physical one, which is obvious and, you know, they have, I'm not belittling it, but the invisible pain we're talking about is more important because there's a lot of suicide rate and there's a lot of campaign we have in Australia. Are you okay? Something like that. And this is something we need to, we need this kind of mentality to, to face gentleness and compassion and the coldness of the current society as in the people to people getting colder, you know, the relationship wise, just even the normal relationship is also a, an issue. The lack of warmth, uh, the lack of community, sense of community. Um, that's the reality. So how do we how do we go through this? How do we navigate this? How do our next generation navigate this? Right? That means we are lacking merit now. Our merit is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Our world is getting more, um, how do I say, polarized. People, people, people put themselves in one camp and never want to understand one another. Uh, they always subscribe to whatever ideas they have and they're stuck. Instead of looking at the whole picture and say, we need to build together. Doesn't matter how different we are. We're in the same place. We're trying to build say, this nation, trying to build these communities. There are people doing that hard work, 
And these are very compassionate, gentle people. They are every, every pockets of these people. It's just that they are not um, being uh, shown much to the world compare, in comparison to something that is negative, something that is polarizing. So that's also an issue. This lacking, lacking wisdom is a great issue because wisdom means that you can see everything perspective. You're not stuck with one path and never move around. You're fluid, but you're not. You have principle, but you are able to um, incorporate everyone else. There's wisdom, right? Rounded, well-rounded. But you have one, one center point. You still have a center point, but you are able to, you know, look at everyone's perspective. So back to this one. Uh, treats everything from smallest things, as in your things, your goods, uh, your pens and papers. Everything you treat it properly. You put it in the right place. Uh, your behave, your behavior, right? Your tone towards your people close to you. It's easier to be gentle towards others outside, right? It's easier to be compassionate towards outsiders because you don't know them. You have no history with them. But if with someone close to you, right, you already know everything, the, the plus and all the minuses. Most of the time, we might get stuck in the minuses because we've seen them too much digging nose, snoring, or sleeping too long, never help me with my uh, glass washing, dish washing, and eh, common. Eh? Um, we, might, and we might focus on that point too much and forgot that how you know we become family in the first place, as in how we become uh, husband and wife, or how we become, or how we have this condition to be a family as a sibling or father and child, mother and child. So this is important. This this requires more from the gentleness and compassion to handle. Um, able to step back a little bit. Don't get too stuck in that reality. Have a look and say how it begins and how it evolves into now. Um, and how can I be more aware, understanding? Compassion is also about understanding, more empathy, right? Um, from their perspective, you know, maybe we have not talked enough or maybe you have not feel enough for, from each other's perspective. A lot of times, family is about, it's less about talking, it's more about doing, and people will feel it. You can say, I love you, I love you 100 times, but nothing says I love you more than actually contributing, actually, you know, sharing the pain or allow a space for your own family members to share their insecurities or worries if you have that space congratulations you quite you have quite a good family they have they can open up and share it and hence when when you vent out good or bad uh, being patient is also part of compassion being gentle is a part of compassion lets them release that burden if that thing cooped up too long not being resolved properly becomes depression and that depression Keeps, means you get stuck in that perspective because you can't see anything else. And that thing gets deeper and deeper. It will lead to suicide in a sense. I'm not a doctor on this, but what I'm saying is most of the time people might have depression before they went to that extreme. So it needs to, this is important, guys. This gentleness and compassion is also about patient, about wise, be able to see from different perspective. Uh, also about, you know, put yourself in perspective of others. Uh, and let them or just be there and listen it's compassion your co-worker might have issues and if you have good relationship with this co-worker or even just a friend you can just sit there and let them have a coffee and just listen might not even have to say anything just give them a smile that's compassion it's doable right give them a smile it's doable yeah it might be hard for some but you'll feel you realize if you allow yourself to try a different path in your life, to try a different ways of living, you might eventually have a bigger world to live in. Instead of the world that you thought you're living in is that narrow, that dark, that desolate. Not to diminish the, the misfortune that happens to many in terms of war, in terms of pandemics. This is where the gentleness compassion is even more important, more crucial, because this is where you need to, where you actually either grow and get mature and get better, more resilient, more compassion, 
or you get crushed by it. Um, yeah. So this pre preparedness is important. This this path of virtues is not just about I'm a good person. It's about how you um, live a bigger world, how you live your life um, more brightly, despite all that happens. You know, takes time and takes learning. At the same time, you need to put it in your life and see what you can do, something like that. So he gives us a perspective. So these are still quite conceptual, gentleness, compassion, that's good. So first thing is loyal to his countrymen, fully to his parents, kind to his brothers and sisters. Um, these are examples of how you be gentle and compassion. First thing is a person who is gentle and compassion, they do not uh, betray his own country because this is where his family, everything is built on. His failure to his parents, so love and respect your parents. Um, you know, people with all the plus and minuses, or with all the sometimes their families they are broken, they are abused. Say parents as well, because I'm bringing that out because there's so many news report on that side, and I'm just gonna say that no matter what you were here as a person, as in your existence. In the very, very, very minimum, the existence owed to them. In the very, very minimum, all you need to do is not to have hate, to let go of that grudge. That's a minimum requirement. Don't burden yourself with the faults of others if you indeed have a abusive experiences. You know, liberate yourself first, all right? Um, because holding on to that is like holding a coal. Buddha has a metaphor. Holding on to anger is like holding a hot coal on your hand. The only thing that harms is yourself. You get yourself burned. Whether that person will get his comeuppance or right or wrong is, like I say, over here. Like a shadow, follow a body. And they might also be because of the past life. We give a different perspective, offering this perspective to you guys because we're Buddhist. We talk about karma. And... Karma has past, present, future. I mean, Hindu also talk about that as well. But in Buddhism, the past, present, future, everything is linked. And what you have right now is what the result of your past act, deeds, all right? Act, deeds, including your action, your thought, your speech. What you have in future will be decided by what you're doing right now. And if you liberate yourself with gentleness and compassion, or in the very least, not hate, not um, harbor resentment then in the very least you are able to move on with your life lighter than what you had before light of this burden right if it's but right now we're talking about a normal scenario come on not everyone getting abused so getting scolded because you're not doing your homework or doing your dishes is not abuse guys don't use that as an excuse as just you're not doing your job okay uh, doing your part so deserve it. Um, <clears throat> getting whipped as well is okay. We might say, "Oh no, you whip children, abuse." But uh, depends, you know. Sometimes it's just sometimes you, can't, you when you look back at yourself, it's like I, I would whip myself if there's a way, because this kind of attitude is terrible. That means you've grown, in a sense. Like yeah, I would whip like I would whip myself if he act like this again. I would whip myself if I see myself doing that, something like that. But um, jokes aside, yeah, just. Be gentle, be patient. As most important is to be patient. Because our parents tend to love to talk a lot of details, especially listen to them, to the story. And then might even entertain and go with them, you know. Um, you might see a different side of your parents. Because we always see your parents when he, they are busy taking care of us. We didn't see them when they were young, when they were in their 20s, romantic and all that carefree time. We only see them when they are nagging us to do our homework, trying to get uh, another meal done or trying to get us through day to day. It's because they care, they take care of us because of that, you know, they be, they grow into the role of parents. But they also were like you, a young, carefree teenagers, all right, wondering about many things in the world, all right. And now you have the condition to be their family. So take care of them, not just physically or mentally. Take care of their memories as well that's how you be filial right not just ritualistic that's important polite mannerism 
that's step one. Otherwise, there's no way to talk. You can you talk to someone to, who keeps interrupting you and say no, 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 right? You can't. So mannerism is important, guys. I'm not saying you should not, but when you, it's your parents, so it's easier. And your siblings as well. They share the same uh, memory with you when you grow up. You have that memory with them together when you grow up. So be kind, no matter who they become, or maybe they become more or departed from your family. I'm talking about the best bad scenario, but normal scenario, just you know, gather time to time. If you live separately, if you're together, sometimes you can't bear some mannerism of your siblings. Just be patient. You know, you they, you also have something they cannot bear as well. <laughs> So be kind, all right? Uh, do that at home first before you go out and have a relationship because you're going to repeat the same mistakes as well, all right? Don't carry what is wrong in your generation to the next generation. Instead, that's what I'm saying about a character is you need to build up a right character. If your parents have shown the right character, being a loyal, honest integrity, a person who with full integrity, despite um, what happens, you know, maybe disadvantage outside. He still stayed true to his character, uh, treat people with fairness, kindness, uh, do not take advantage of others, do his job, duty, fulfill to his duty as a parent, as a leader or as a worker. This kind of character will drill you into the children without saying anything. Of course, what you say will also influence how your children sees others. But what I'm saying is your character right you already set up a right path for your children. So being right, being good, is not just important for you, it's important for people who are very close to you, your own baby, your own children, your own family, your wife or husband, or your brothers and sisters. And also your, in our case, maybe Dharma brothers and sisters. So this is crucial, not just for them, for, not for yourself, for others. Hence the next sentence. He cultivates himself and reforms others. So smooth, eh? So, there you go. You cultivate yourself, you set a path, not just for yourself, for others to follow as well. They will modify it to their own temperament and their own situation, but they will still walk on the right direction. And the right direction is, uh, that's not straight while it's proper, what it's called offense and secret. If you can do that, you're doing it right. Uh, he's showing concerns for the welfare of the lonely, widow, and orphan. This is expanding. This is from your own family, yourself, to others. A person who cares for your own parents, cares for your own siblings. Well, you know, normal person who really cares about what matters the most would naturally project this on others. They also have their own parents. They also have their own siblings. When you look at someone who has no parents, you felt the pain because you have received love from your parents. And if you look at the orphan who has lost their parents at such a young age, immediately hits you. What I have, they don't have. So what can you do is through some channels, you give them as much as you could what your parents give you. Show them love. You even bring them to a team park. Give them some food some favorite candies, snacks, those are small things. In long term, you bring, you have to set up a group, you know, like this consultation or, or a sharing group but when they are older, help them through. So there's a lot of charities that do that and we can support them as well. Widowed, same, like if you have your own partner, good time with your own partner. When you see someone widowed, be it male or female, um, you felt the pain immediately you will want to help them. Lonely, yes. If you have a good companionship with friends, siblings, parents, or the relatives, then you see someone lonely, you immediately say that, oh, you know, go up, say, how are you? Give them a coffee, something like that. Just, it, it, it flows out of you. If you have done, done the job, I mean, if you've done the part of your own circle, you will expand it outwards. Um, welfare of it, in this case, is just the uh, emotional, and you can talk about the extra physical, you can donate, you can volunteer organization, that's a channel you can talk to them, or like this, you can even share uh, these teachings outside, 
so that they have that they're equipped with that how does it equip well enough to deal with it um eventually they find their own way to have a happy life so it's also important mentally prepare more than the physical physical is important but mental man if if you're living luxury happy life and what well, happy life as in everything you have you want you have you, you you got it you have the resources but you're not happy you're never enough you always greed for more one for more then um you're mentally not ready for happiness you're not mentally happy you just um you just uh phys- you just rich but but sad <laughs> i don't want to say uh yeah no one wants that Anyway, so what is the found, true foundation of happiness is this one. Okay. Now we move on. Respect the elderly and cares for the young. Does not hurt or damage even the little insect, animals, grasses and flowers. So this is our, this is our expansion. They keep going. You know, everyone who are elder, not just your parents, not just your grandparents, you will feel that way to them as well. Like eventually you feel like they are your parents too, in a sense. 一些男子是我父,一些女人是我母 In the sense that you, um, you, 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 you expand it You expand it, right? You project it properly, properly. Um, Obviously they're still not your parents by blood But they can, you take care of them as if they're parents Or in the very least, you're being respectful Everyone's being respectful All right, That vibe, the environment is very harmonious, gentle and Natural as well Cares for the young Cares for the young. What does it mean? Give you a perspective in the old China, 100 years ago. Master Ching Kong shared that. I'm actually one of um, the town that my parents are from as well. Well, Master Ching Kong is one more accurate because that one is a very uh, classic example of how people care for the young. Is Every time the kids from this village being naughty, you know, you know cause troubles, they don't have to wait for their parents to give them a lesson or give them an earful. These uncles and aunties that, you know, from the neighbors, they come up and say that. And the parents will always bow and say, thank you so much for educating my children. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, the kids immediately knows the, what is right, what is wrong. They know that, okay, I should not cause litter around or yelling at other people's neighborhood or playing something dangerous like pushing a cart onto the onto the uh, main road that might cause accidents, something like that. They immediately have neighbors tell, give, giving you an earful and say that this is not right. All right. So right now we, you see the reverse. It's, they are overprotective of the children. Say, my children is always right. What kind of example are you setting for your children? He can do whatever he likes without care of the common law, of the common goods. In student, in school, there are more cases of, you know, teacher being, how to say, strict holding on to the discipline of the room and then the parents come up and complain and say, uh, no, my children is have all the human rights. It's not human rights if everyone's, um, let's say, uh, if this, the society is not in order, is in the, the, the rules are not followed, common rules are not followed, the laws are not followed, right? You don't use human rights above this. There are laws to be followed. Otherwise, you're obstructing the human right of other people. There's a limit there. So that's what I'm saying is this this kind of mindset needs to be put in, you know, needs to be reined in, right? You are not bigger than the whole thing, right? You are unique. You are deserving to be loved, to be cared of, but you cannot intrude on other people's um, spaces as well. You need to respect the common space you share. This is a public we're calling about, all right? If you want to use that logic. That's what I'm saying. We're going back from here. Respect the elderly, cares for the young. It gives a sense of a natural conduct between two generations. The, the elderly will always look after the, the young. Everything they do, no matter from family, from society, from company, their policy decision, they will always think that, what do I want to leave to my next generation? Not how much more trillion, billion dollars I can earn. And then not leaving enough to spend it. And then leaving million trillions of dollars of bloody debts, sorry, debts to the next generations and a worse environment for them. Short sightedness. 
elderly are not acting like an elderly. Youngs, they will not act like a young. It's messed up. So young has to become elderly sometimes. They have to take care because of the burden they have inherited. The elderly, sometimes they are not, uh, how to say, not thinking as an elderly. I think I am responsible for the future of my generations. Right? I'm not saying everyone. I'm not doing that. I'm saying that a person who uh, in the human society that is normally functional, it should be just you know the elderly taking care of the young. The young learns how to be respectful and loving uh, towards the elderly who have contributed to their society. And hence, he will bring that example to his own young when he becomes the elderly. The elderly will always have elderly because the young will become the elderly, right? The young will always have their young. But anyway, point is, without this right order, what happened? The elderly only cares about elderly as in the person who's in adult, okay, who is supposed to taking care of the welfare of their next generation. Only focus on the short term benefit they have, the ex the, the excitement, the, the 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 how to say the enjoyment they have in this short period of time. When they get older, they go all lonely and dejected because they have not contributed enough, invested enough on the next generation. The next generation does not know what it's supposed to be doing. They all, they thought, yeah, I should learn from my elder generations. Just enjoy myself. That's it. Just enjoy my own. That's it. I don't care about the others because they, they don't care as well. Why would, I, why would I care? And this kind of mindset keeps going. Everyone gets more apart. Society breaks. If society breaks, how can your nation be, be safe? So, this are family is a basic unit, um, and community is important for a family to grow healthily. If a community, everyone is trying to get a one up on other people, then everyone always distrust more distrust. Without trust that bonds everyone together, how can it be? Care uh, the young does not trust the elder. The elder does not care about the young. To worry worry too much about earning just the money, not about the generation educating, setting up a right character virtue I'm talking about, right character for the next generation. That mindset needs to change. You can stop it in our generation, but it needs a lot of work, more work. Okay, so a person who do that, a person who is very compassionate and kind, they do not hurt or damage even the smallest insect, animals, grasses and flowers. That means you don't even want to hurt something as small and as powerless in our eyes, like ants, uh, little animals, you know, like rabbits. Well, we don't cable across rabbits every day, but like, yeah, rabbits, pigeons, all that. Animals, even grasses and flowers, beautiful, lush uh, scenery of grasses. You don't want to step on it. You want to let it be there, you know, going through its own natural cycle, something like that, very Disney. But, um, but also very... Um, even the smallest thing you don't harm, let alone the big things like cows, uh, like, you know, living beings, like other human beings leveling up from the smallest to the, it's just trying to imply that even the smallest thing you don't harm, you will not harm someone next to you, your fellow human beings or the big animals. So compassion, they are fleshing out what is compassion. Right, and then he rejoices in the virtue of others and pities the evil. See, pities, not hate, not punished, right? Not judge. So first thing is rejoice. Suisi, ah, how do I say in Chinese? Just a sec. Ah, 乐人之善，济人之急，救人之危。没有没有，这边这边，一敏人之凶，乐人之善。Okay, so a good a person with Solid, positive virtues character. First thing is he rejoices in the virtues of others and pities the evils. So, you know, when someone doing good things, they will always promote it. He will, uh, she will, he or she will, be very um happy. It felt like I'm doing it as well. That's Swisi. That's very important. Not jealous. Not trying to find an anger at that person. 
trying to drill a corner at that person saying maybe this has some intention. That's the problem. There's so much thing. Even he has only 1% of virtue. Okay, I'm talking about reality. Uh, if you want to say this person must have some you know, implicit uh, mindset, even that person has 1% virtue, you should only focus on that 1%. That 99% you need to um, be aware, but set it aside. Because why? That's not because of that person. If you focus on the virtue, you as in the media, everyday people, word of mouth, or through the media, through the mindset, the culture of the society, you understand, you, you, you're promoting something that is good. You're making sure everyone focus, how to say, act on what is good. Uh, and what is not good, what kind of attitude should we have? Same here, pities the evil. They have that attitude of sympathetic towards the evil instead of hate. That means it will, it has a mechanism to, um, how do I say, to let the let that people who stray from the path to come back, instead of pushing them further to the edge, and forcing them to, you know, bounce back, in a in a in a in a negative way, extremism. In many forms, it can be terrorism, it can be um, school shooting, it can be worst, you know, it can be social path, something like that. Those things are not happening just by on its own. The society is a mechanism, guys. If the mechanism cannot capture the people who are dejected, who are sidelined well enough, then they will bounce back in a form that we cannot imagine. It will, dis- it, will, it will harm this mechanism even worse. And so we need to have a proper education right, of um, how do we regard what is good and what is bad and how do we resolve it. So virtues of others, even that person, um, how to say, if that person has done the right thing, good Samaritan, we should praise it. We should, um, how to say, promote it. Let people know all right, there are hope in the humanities. It's not always that bad. Don't get stuck in that perspective. How do you not get people stuck in that perspective? Give them a different perspective. Give them a choice. All right. Don't keep showing them, shoving down their face. This is how the reality is. This is how the world is. They get more and more cornered. They can't see the beautiful side of the world. Remember, glass can be half empty, can also be half full. If you keep thinking about the empty, it's like, oh, I'm getting lesser and lesser. If you think about half who is, you know, I have half instead of nothing. Two perspectives. Same thing, right? Same glass, same uh, what, 50 milliliters. I don't know how many ounces or 50 milliliters. And then put both sides look at it differently. One is like, oh, I'm getting lesser and lesser. The other side is, oh, I used to have nothing. Now I have half of it. Not bad. So, Give them that kind of mentality so that they can see the world more creatively, more broadly. They don't get extremized on one side. It's very important society to, in society to educate that kind of mindset. So this is important. Rejoice in the virtues of others and pities the evil. All right? Because the evil was pushed. Why, why evil? Why is people doing something harmful to you, to your society? This person himself is also suffering from something. And the more outrageous, audacious his deeds is, the more he suffers from it. And he releases it in a way that is also destructive towards others. Everything needs to release, guys. Mecha- they need to have a good mechanism to release. A car needs to have exhaust, otherwise it will explode. All right? Your breathing needs to have CO2 coming out. Otherwise, you get trapped and die of, I don't know, the medical words. You got too much CO2. CO2 poisoning, carbon poisoning. So your emotion as well, it needs to be released. Otherwise, you become like this. Or the ignorant needs to be, make aware, uh, need to be taught with wisdoms, with different perspectives. Ignorant means I'm not aware of what happened. I'm also ignorant of many things. Now, I need to be open up to the more to, to what is unknown there so something like that so yeah 
release mechanism, guys, is important. Otherwise, it becomes either self-destructive, which is depression, and then suicide. It's not self-destructive. So you're also destroying your own parents. You're also destroying your partners. You're destroying your fr close friends. People who commit that act is also harming people who love them. Eventually, pulling them towards the same path. How is it good? It, no good will come out of that. Self-destruction or destruction of others is the same. If you love yourself, you will love others. Self-love, self-care is caring for others as well. If, if you can't care for yourself, care for yourself is able to find a way to release the mechanism, release that sadness. Also, increasing your perspective, your wisdom, You're able to see through this impermanence of life, these emotions, these feelings, this unfortunate when you're impacted by it and you give a bit of time and with a bit of help from the teachings, you're able to see that it's empty, essentially, as in it, it keeps changing. Not as in it doesn't exist, it, its reality is not permanent, it keeps changing. Like Guan Yin Pusa, Guan Zizai Pusa, Xin Sun, Bodo, Bodo, Mido, Si, Zhao Jian, Wu Yun, Jie Kong, Du Yi Che Ku. When Bodhisattva Guan Yin has, the, from the Heart Sutra, the Bodhisattva Guan Yin, Abba Loi Ki Desvara, when he um, enters into the deep prajna paramita, which is the wisdom, body wisdom, not just conventional. Uh, prajna paramita. Paramita means you go to the other side. You're liberated from this cease suffering. Para, paramita. Mita means to the other side. Um, prajna is a wisdom that makes Buddha a Buddha. Anyway, when he enters the, the state of deep prajna paramita, there are many levels. Um, he has reflect, he reviews, it was revealed to him the five skanda, S-K-A-N-D-H-A. -A. Five skanda is what we are right now. We have material, sight, materials, which is se, material in this case, se zi, and then show, feeling. So material, feel, thought, uh, reaction, and then differentiation. Se means your material. Materials, purpose is to stop you from passing it through. But it's phenomena is empty. If you look at Einstein's atomic particles, everything was only formed by atomic. If you can go through the atomic gap, you can pass through the wall. So if you are make, able to be, and uh, how to say, go through the wall, that means you can go through the atomic gap. So we have modern science to help us on this. I love that. So anyway, continue. Uh, um, feel. Right now, I feel happy. I feel sad. All right. What does feel means? I feel what I like, what I don't like. All right. Um, what is favorable, I like. What is unfavorable, I don't like. But first stage is favorable, unfavorable. That's feel. And then thought, I like this. I don't like this. So feel is just the impact between your six stimuli, your eyes, your ears. I like to see, I don't like to see. I like to smell, I don't like to smell. I don't like the toilet smell, I like the food smell, something like that. I like salty, I don't like sweet, something like that. And then your mind, your thought process and say, I don't like this, I, I like this. One collects, one thinks, and then you react to it. So now I'm going towards what I like. I'm rejecting what I don't like. I tolerate what I am feeling neutral about. And then the last one is differentiation. You enforce that into it. Say, now I will only stick to what I like. And then I will reject what I don't like. So understanding that, we understand that it's all empty because you keep changing what you like, what you don't like. It will not be forever. It keeps changing. So your perspective gets bigger. So hence, the Bodhisattvas say that you liberate from your sufferings if you go through this. For us, we might not have deep prashna parameter. We, not reach, we have that parameter. We have not reached that wisdom perspective. But we need to learn. And it starts with here. Learn the good for others. So you can see bigger world, the world they are bigger than your thought. Don't get trapped by your thought. Remember your five skanda that forms who you are, your material. First one is material, the other four is uh, mental. So psychological, what well, is only part of it, everything. So material and mental, mentality, two, who, who we are is this two, form of this two. And itself is always changing. So do not let that tra um, trap you you really liberate it once you're aware of it. Whatever bad happenings to you, it also can be good eventually. 
So I will stop here because we are one minute away. Uh, yeah, see, we can actually have a lot of content uh, just by talking about one sentence. Everything here is very lined up very logically and very, um, they have stage by stage. So um, we, I'm just offering a few perspective for us to bounce off and you can, based on this, you know, principle, you can grow your own. Uh, that's the best part of it. But the good thing is we need to learn the, the right logic first, the logic of it first. And then we can use it in our life. No matter how um, small, how big our event that happens to us. Don't, um, a virtuous person will never stray from it because he understands its benefits. And they will even, they, later they will have a big, big part of it will show you the why you have to avoid this. Why is an evil? There is no benefit from this. We'll make that logic more clear, more well known for you guys as we go on. Okay, so that's it for today. Um, let's conclude this by chanting ten times Amitofo. 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 A mi to fo. 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 May all the merits and virtues accrued dedicated to all beings in the world that are suffering from natural calamities, uh, from pandemics, from human-made disasters like wars, and all the beings and its karma creditors. Uh, may they all be liberated to the better realm, to the pure land. And May the dedication of merits be dedicated to Master Ching Kong. May he stay in our will longer to spread the Dharma. And may we all practice the Dharma of Buddha through him, through his example. Uh, may also the dedication of the merits be dedicated to all practitioners of all pure land organization in the world. Uh, may they get better in their cultivation, stronger in their vow and conviction to go to Pure Land. Uh, may also all the good practitioners of all other teachings of Buddha or other religions be successful in uh, educating and uh, purifying the mindset, environment of people around them so that the world is truly at peace eventually. So we'll read the proper um, phrase. <laughs> May the merits and virtues accrue from this work, adorn the Buddha's pure land, repay the four kinds of kindness above, and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion and live in the, te the teachings for the rest of this life. Then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Amitofo. Thank you everyone.